place, a new home for a while. Let me feel alive. Nothing to hold me back. Take my time, just enjoy the ride. I know man, passing by. Life is good, best I ever felt. Get me up, so new, so right. Welcome back to the garden. The heirloom sweet corn is ready for harvest today. So this is gonna be an August harvest tour video with tips along the way. A couple things that I've been doing for the past few weeks to aid in crop success. Also some growing examples of companion planting and trellising. Hope this video will inspire and help you with ideas for your own garden. Did do a little uh, hand pollination just by uh, shaking around the edges. Corn is wind pollinated, so you can just shake the tassels, make sure they get onto the husks. And uh, you don't want too much overhead watering when you're trying to pollinate your corn. And there's a really nice one. It's nice and full right to the tip. Take me back to Mexico that can come sun would turn a sun or hide on me. Want it to hide with me. Take me back to Mexico that can come sun would turn a sun or hide. a peaches and cream variety called Double Standard. So I planted out about 100 plants here. So I was expecting, you know, like one to 200 nice, really nice cobs Ears. for all the effort that I did put in. Ended up with about 60 here and a bin full of probably like a hundred quite small ones a lot of side sheets so you know it's okay definitely room for improvement um, next year I may just go ahead and go with um, a hybrid variety um, but I did want to grow an heirloom type so that I could save some seed to be more self-sufficient a couple of bins are really nice ones and some more scragglers still some good corn in there though gonna chop it all off of the cobs also saving the uh, corn silks so i ended up pressure canning a lot of the corn got a bit in the freezer as well and my sister also came by with a bunch of saskatoon and made some jam so I selected out five nice ones for some seed and it's been a couple of days now. They're starting to dry out. They dry pretty fast. So this is Victory and Tiana. Butternut squash trellises here. So the ones on the trellis do really nice because they're up off the ground and the bees find them easily. And they stay nice and pristine. Really appreciate growing squash on trellises. So I've been giving Victory and Tiana um, a microbe foliar application to just keep any mites off when it's really dry like it is out. Uh, they tend to get some mites. I don't have too much other problems in terms of pests besides sometimes a bit of mite, maybe some mildew a little bit later. So fairly lucky where I am. Um, I can grow squash quite easily without pests, it seems like for the most part. So I created these beds uh, just piling up a bunch of sod when I leveled this area here earlier in the spring and I applied a nice enriched potting soil um, with compost and fertilizer on the top and then I covered it with a lumber tarp cut holes in that and planted my squash plants right into there and a couple of weeks ago I also did a underdressing of some composted cow manure and straw I really soaked that down just to ensure everyone was real nice and happy and there was enough fertile uh, soil growing medium for them to really take off and be more successful for harvest. So here I've got some delicata squash growing up twine. This is the first uh, year trying this technique. It's kind of an experiment. 
Um, got it growing in just a big flat tote. Filled some holes in there for drainage. And delicata is a smaller sized squash, so I think it'll do okay without any extra support on the actual fruit. So I have a row of improved telegraph cucumber in this open woodshed greenhouse area here. Yeah, it's a beauty. So the Windsor beans are doing pretty well. They were starting to fall down a little bit when I was watering. So I recently tightened up the string and pulled the stakes together. And we're just starting to flower now. Got some marigolds at the end of this bed as well to attract bees. And my carrots are large enough now that I've taken the shade cloth off of here. It was on for about two weeks just to get the carrots going so they don't singe from the heat. Uh, they're all nicely thinned out now and can handle the sun. Romaine lettuce, been harvesting that still. Um, it benefited from the shade cloth on here for a while, uh, but romaine will hold in the heat quite well. And it's still actually sweet, even though it's um, kind of bolting a little bit now. Purple ruffle basil in here and some holy basil. And on the other side, I've got some peppers in front of my tomatoes. Pretty packed in here, it's a little crowded. It's a bit shaded with from the cucumbers as well, but they are starting to produce, so we'll see how they do. And another single row of carrots. These are a sprint, 45 days, so they mature very fast. All right, we're gonna be harvesting some cucumbers here. In the first half of this trellis, I really do not like. Um, it's called Serpent Long Italian Variety. It is an F1, um, but they get bitter right away. And the coloring is strange. A lot of them just go kind of limey in color right away. Uh, so I'm really not impressed by that one. Won't be growing this one again, um, but the Su Yo Long Chinese Heritage Variety seem to be super awesome. It's the first year growing these as well. And probably one of my new favorites they are sizing up. They are super long and really sweet and crisp. No bitterness. So super beautiful and awesome variety. And it's an heirloom. So you could save seed if you like. all these flowers right next to my squashes here and these lima bean towers as well now the bees are transferring to the flowers here as they open these towers are doing really great planted these sunflowers in front here and they're helping with the trellising get a little bit more height obviously these lima beans want to grow even taller. Yeah, this fencing is seven feet that I made these towers out of. So, you know, they, they can grow 12 feet or so. Uh, that's fine. They'll just kind of uh, fall down a little bit. Lots of nice flowers coming. It's a really nice combination with the sunflowers in here. Marigolds that are blooming really nice, but now they're getting pretty shaded out. So I'm really enjoying this uh, wooden trellising for these determinate tomatoes. I think I would do this again next year. Just a couple uh, stakes in about a foot apart and then some lateral pieces. took a while to uh, really get going for them to climb up these poles. This diameter is a little bit thick, I found. I really like this size here. But this is called uh, Celebration. It's a runner bean. 
And we have a super sugar snap pea trellis here. Some volunteer sunflowers. That's a tall one. These are planted in a hugel culture berm, mostly created uh, by piling sticks this size. So you really want to keep picking your peas on time so that they keep producing lots of water uh, in the heat of the summer. A little bit of shade like in here is ideal. Now that the nighttime temperatures are dropping a little bit, um, I think these ones probably pull through for a fall crop as long as I keep them watered. We do have some flowers on here already. Now that I picked everything off, it's going to really trigger them to want to produce more pods. I'm gonna grab some food forest golden beets. They've sized up really nice. It's gonna make our way over here. I've already harvested all the bulbing fennel here and another row behind that bed, kind of just growing in the pathway. These beets are really nice and large. Really nice and juice if you don't want to kind of muddy up the color of your green juice. need some time. I have another little beet patch that are larger. We'll go see if we can find a couple more larger red ones. Oh yeah, they are slender. They're just kind of bulging at the top a little bit. New shape. Sometimes they're more banana shaped. That one's a little bit more peg-like. And the Asian pear is quite loaded this year. I thinned them a bit. Really a heavy producer. This is her fourth season, fourth year. All right, so I want to show you this D. Sicilia serpent squash and trellising, and they've done exactly what I was hoping, just filling up this whole uh, above head trellising that I put on top of the greenhouse here. They're really just taking it right over. And now we are starting to get some fruit sets. So here is the Avalon Butternut Squash Tower. Nice fruits on there now. So I've been sliding these off-cut lumber pieces in across the way there, both ways, just to support the vine and hopefully catch some fruits as well. I'm excited about this bush butternut squash type here. Been picking out the uh, ripe ones as they mature. Giving these ones with that are a bit lighter in yellow um, some microbe tea, the, just to try to help them with their coloring get them taking up more nutrients. That's something the microbe tea really helps with is nutrient absorption. So the big squash and blueberry bed is uh, cropping out really good. They're really starting to size up. We're gonna go through 
and just pick the ripe ones off. There's a few clusters. Best to let the neck go kind of dry and more yellow. Actually, this one's yellow. I think this guy is, yeah, that's, that's ready. <laughs> so many. So I think I am gonna cut a few of these Uchiki curry squash. Uh, the necks are yellowing. They're starting to finish off very close. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut some and hopefully that will um, allow the vines to uh, set more fruit and actually finish before the end of the year. The vines are still nice and healthy. So we got new sets there. So by taking a few of the ripe ones off, I'm hoping that these are gonna really uh, be allowed to ripen up. See, there's one, they kind of start to do that after a while. And they have a nice rich color. You're getting a bit of striping on there. That's when you know they are finishing. And they're nice and heavy. Yeah, I'm gonna go for a few. Anyone that looks like this, I'm gonna take off. And I really think they're going to produce more fruit that way. These are beauties. Oh, this is so exciting. It's kind of a surprise harvest, actually. Still a little bit green, the stem. Yeah, I'm gonna let a bunch of them go another week or so. I love Zuchiki curry squash. One of my faves for sure. This and butternut, that I'm primarily growing this year. These are great because they, they mature quickly. They really take off. That's it for the harvest for now. Probably could take a few more, but I'm gonna let the rest go for another week and then we'll probably cut another harvest out of there like this. The Emirate bean trellis is doing really well. Oh, wow. I haven't really looked in it for a couple of days, but there's totally beans that are ready. They really kind of sneak up on you. The sunflowers here, they're working as a trellis extension. Got these uh, beets in front, direct seeded. Since I'm over here, might as well check out the blush grape vine. size of those blueberries. That's fat. Some huge blueberries in here. They plump up right at the end, right when they start to ripen. So that's what I'm gonna pick for today. There's still quite a few that could be picked, but I'm gonna wait a few days. So it's a little bit easier to pick them by pulling off larger bunches of ripe ones. Let's see here. Uh -oh. <laughs> Let's go over and see how the cabbages are doing. I think I'm going to go for both of these here. This one's getting kind of chomped at. Lug damage in there. Yeah, it's good that I get this now for sure. This one isn't super dense compared to this variety here, but it's a nice cabbage, early cabbage. It's kind of drying up there on the edge. It looks, I'm pretty sure, most of these in here are fairly done. I'm not going to harvest them all now because I don't have space for them. Make some nice summer slaw. Some of these. <laughs> That's a beauty. Super nice and dense. Man, I love this variety. April green. It's not a hybrid either, which is awesome. Really nice sweet flavor, and they head up super fast and early. Actually, I'm gonna cut this one other one. I'm kind of practicing, um, you know, harvesting produce when it is ready at its peak. I have a tendency, especially in the past, to leave things too long just because I want to savor in their in their beauty and their glory, and you know, want them to get bigger. But when you know things are done, it's best to harvest them get them out of the garden. 
I'm actually gonna harvest one more. <laughs> one more time. Is there either a sprint or maxi? It's a quick carrot, about 45, 50 days. There is a beauty. Yeah, all right, some of these are definitely ready.